Supporting Spurs has never been easy. We have a saying, don't we? Doing it the hard way since 1882. So, if you had to do a season review, forget about the Champions League final. Bear with me, just try not to think about the Champions League final just yet. But on the whole, if you look at the season that we've had, if you look at it from the beginning of the season, where did we think we would be? Did we think that um, we would finish the season in a Champions League spot or not? And if you put your hand on your heart, whilst we would all say, yeah, we wanted that and we expected that, did we actually really believe it? I suppose when you think, right, that we're going into a new stadium. So there's disappointment number one. We was all geared up, ready to go into a new stadium. And what happens? We get let down. Through no fault of the clubs, you know, I get that. It's not the club's fault, you know, building projects. I've said all along, you know, you're never going to, you're never going to get it to, to come in on time and on budget and all that kind of stuff. They say, don't they, that, you know, if you've got a budget for a project, double it. And if you've got a time scale, add six months to it, you know. So I think that's fairly normal that people would, uh, that, that that would happen to us, you know. But obviously when you're a football fan, sense it kind of goes out of the window and you're thinking, you know, you're always for positive with a new season coming along. So, you know, like most others, I was you know, really geared up to go into that new stadium. So having to go back to Wembley was a huge disappointment. And uh, that causes its own problems as well because, you know, the atmosphere in Wembley, we've talked about it so many times, was so poor and it really kills everything. Um, add to that, we had some pretty poor results against teams that we expected to win um, so it was a real up and down up and down season uh, you know from the start again you know no sign-ins and blah 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 so you would think that <clears throat> I'm being uh, negative uh, a negative fan um, I don't want to be negative I, I'm just saying how I saw it at the beginning of the season um, lots and lots of disappointment and it was pretty much up and down the whole season you know we've had uh, we've had a couple of um, great results beating Man United away at Old Trafford great result Deli Ali's chip on the uh, Guna goalkeeper in the uh, Carabao Cup loved it brilliant um, Moussa Sissoko's form I mean <laughs> We never expected to see that happening at the beginning of the season, but he's, uh, you know, almost one of the first names on the team sheet now, and we really miss him uh, when he's not playing. He's drive and all that. We really miss him. Um, but yeah, there was, you know, we've had some shit results as well. You know, losing against uh, Wolves after. I mean, I was at that game watching it and I never ever expected us to lose it it was just a drab drab game we were threatening 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 and nothing was happening and uh, but they were doing nothing and then boom they hit us two goals blowing us away so real disappointments and real disappointments in the season so as a review of the overall season you have to say it's probably a fair one you know considering that we had no signings, no stadium, terrible injury problems, um, out of the FA Cup, out of the Carabao Cup um, within a week. Again, really, really disappointing. But coming home, wow, how did that feel, guys? I, you know, I loved it, absolutely loved it. Going back to, to White Hart Lane, uh, not just the not just the ground, but the area, the local pubs, meeting up with your friends again, uh, you know, as well as the excitement of a brand new state of the art, best in the world football stadium. 
going on a, an unbeaten run there, fantastic, you know, and then they hit you with a downward blow when you lose to wet spam. We ate that as well, don't we? So, in the in the life of a, of a Spurs fan, it's pretty much been this business, isn't it? Up and down, up and down. One minute you're starting to believe, and the next minute you're you're losing the will to live again. But we love it, don't we? we you know, we're Spurs fans. We've been through it. We love it. It's uh, it's ingrained in us. Getting that top four spot for next season was so 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 important for the club. Not for us as fans, because we want silverware, right? But for the club, in terms of the financial clout and the prestige and all that that comes with it. Yeah, it's a massive, uh, massive thing. Um, so that was the club's main aim. And achieving that main aim um, is success, I guess. Moving to the new stadium and getting settled in is success keeping hold of Pochettino success the the constant selling of the man to every single club around the world when a manager's job becomes vacant is absolutely unbelievable even now while we're sitting in a brand new stadium in the Champions League final on the brink of actually moving to that next level they're trying to sell him off to Juventus. Why? Why? Why would you want to? If you're, if you're in this situation, loved by the fans, in a great relationship with your chairman, with everything that's going on and everything to look forward to, why would you want to go to any of these other clubs? But the media won't leave it alone. Losing in the Carabao Cup, losing in the FA Cup. At the start of the season, those would have been the things that we were kind of saying, well, if we can get top four and win either of those cups, we'd have seen the season as successful. So by the fact that we haven't won either of those cups, without the Champions League, you can kind of go, well, not as great as we'd wanted. We used to take the piss out of Arsenal constantly because they only ever came fourth. So it's not that time to turn around and go, fourth is success uh, and all the rest of it, but just being in the Champions League. Me personally, I want to be in the Champions League because I want us to win the Champions League, not because I want us to be also rounds, yeah? So, you know, when you, when you look at it outside of that, you have to kind of be pragmatic in the fact that this season has been a stabilising one, which I didn't really expect. I, I kind of expected a very um, difficult time. And I think I'm right that it was a difficult time, but with a smattering of good times as well. And I think that's a fair thing to say in terms of a review of the season. So, there's a load of negativity in that, I get it. And like I say, I don't want you to think that I'm being negative, I'm not. I'm trying to be realistic on what, where we were, what we expected, and where we are, and what the outcome was. You know, like I say, Delays to the stadium, no signings, let alone a stellar signing. Huge injury problems, sunny away for uh, the Asian Games and for some friendlies missing out an awful lot. But, out of all of that, you've got Harry Kane who's been out a lot of the season, still banging in 20 plus goals this season. Not enough for the golden boot, granted. But considering the amount of time he's been out, it's a fair one. Sonny being away for the Asian Games and that, and still putting in the performance he has, the guy stepped up, he scored some vital goals. Lucas Mora, 
another huge shout out. Yes, disappointing from time to time. I was absolutely begging for him to kick on from his goals against Man United. But again, the guy's been an in and out player. He's not always in, he's not always out. He comes in when required. But boy, when he has been required, really required, when we've really, really needed it, he's turned up and he's done the business for us. Musa Sissoko, as I touched on earlier, what a player he is turning out to be. If only we could get him scoring some goals, how much would that add to our um, overall love for the guy? He's gone from shit Soko to silk Soko in a matter of games, in a, in a season. Absolute credit to that guy to keep on the way he has and to keep the faith and to work as hard as he has for me, takes art, and I, you know, I'll give him all the credit for that. Absolute credit for that. Another person who I think is, uh, who deserves a shout out for me this season, Danny Rose. I love that guy. Yeah, Danny Rose. He says some things, but I always think that Danny Rose says it for the right reason, and he believes in what he says. And I like that. I like his honesty. I like his upfrontness. I like the fact that he cares. The boy plays with his with his uh, full heart in it. He doesn't hold back. He doesn't step out of a challenge. He doesn't uh, go. Oh, that's a bit tight, or I've got one eye on this place, or whatever. He gives his all, and sometimes it might not be pretty. Sometimes he might make a mistake. He's a human being after all. But the one thing you'll get from Danny Rose is 110%. And I think that calls for um, respect to the man. Because I think he's done the business for us. And especially when you consider the um, mental health issues the guy's gone through and how, he, how he's felt and all the rest of it, to still perform the way he has, absolute credit to him. Hey, Lorente, you know, it just come into my mind. Lorente, how many big goals has he got? And a guy gets absolutely slated. But without some of his goals this season, where would we be? And he sits on that bench for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time. Comes on for two minutes here, two minutes there, and does what he needs to do. And then, when called upon to step up for 90 minutes, for three games straight, he puts it in, he works. Again, not always pretty, but he does what he needs to do to try to make something for the team. And that is all down to one person in my view. And that is Maurizio Pochettino. He has turned those players into a team, a team of players that play for each other, that care about each other, that support each other, that want to win for each other. It's not about the individual, it's about the team. And that is Pochettino's legacy. What a manager. And boy, are we lucky to have him.